Hello, uh, this is Mark Hershey and what I'll be doing is uh, talking to you over the next five or ten minutes and giving you a small presentation on ventilator associated pneumonia with specific interest in the issue of the mini bronchoalveolar lavage to, uh, to diagnose a VAP. As some of you may know, we will be trialing a, mini, a blind mini BAL catheter called the CombiCath. In order to highlight the issue, I thought I would give you a typical scenario. Um, I think we're all very used to this kind of patient, a 70-year-old with COPD in the hospital who has been vented for approximately five days. They have a temperature of 100.8 the night before. The nurse reports that there's a slight change in the sputum. The white count is maybe a little up from 14 to 15, but the house officer points out that the patient is on steroids, and the chest x-ray is not really that a different, not that different from their baseline, um, but I would say that they have all these multiple chronic changes on the chest x-ray. The question we have on this morning is whether or not the patient actually does have ventilator-associated pneumonia. In order to answer that question, we need to go back to the definition of ventilator-associated pneumonia. It's a fairly complex one, and I think relatively vague, which creates some of the problem that we're always faced with. Let's go over this list in detail. As you can see, what we really need is one of the following. Increased temperature and increased white count. Well, I think our patient here probably falls in the category of being one, if not two, of these. Two of the following. Perulent secretions. As I said, the nurse said that there's a slight change in the type of secretions. Worsening cough or dyspnea, very difficult to tell on an intubated patient. Rawls or bronchial breath sound, well, they're already quite abnormal to begin with. And a decreased PF ratio, I didn't say in the scenario, but things haven't really changed very much. So I think in this kind of patient, we're a little unclear whether or not they really do have uh, two of that category. But I think many of us would probably say, with the um, perulent secret change of secretions, and the increased temperature, there's a good chance that we think they do have ventilator-associated pneumonia. However, we all know, too, that there are multiple other reasons for the patient having this kind of uh, change in their clinical and uh, clinical scenario. What I think most interesting about ventilator-associated pneumonia is that the micro data is, as it says here, optional, as you see. What do you need for micro data if you, in fact, choose to use it? is positive blood culture not related to another source. Okay, very interesting. You get your blood cultures. Positive pleural culture. Very few of us will go after the pleural fluid in this situation, especially because most of them don't have significant pleural fluid. Obviously, if there were pleural fluid there, you would go after it if it's significant. But I think most interestingly, interestingly and pertinent to this um, presentation is that in the definition itself of ventilator-associated pneumonia, it does not have tracheal um, cultures, but rather it's quantitative cultures from the BAL. This could either be obtained bronchoscopically or with blind BAL, as, is, uh, as we'll talk about later in this presentation. And notice it says quantitative culture. A BAL with quantitative cultures of greater than 10 to the 4th is most significant. Also, if you have the ability to do a protected brush, which we don't, I don't believe we have in Newton Wellesley Hospital, the amount is the amount of fewer at 10 to the third. Lastly, is you could actually look at 5% intracellular bacteria on gram stain of the BAL. And also, if you had lung tissue itself, that would give you evidence of pneumonia. So before we get into the issue of the mini BAL, let's first talk about the tenets of treatment of VAP. Number one that's not listed on this is the issue of pre prevention of VAP, but that's a whole separate topic. However, once you've decided that you're going to treat, these are the two basic tenets. Early antibiotics uh, directed towards the multiply drug-resistant bugs, such as Pseudomonas and MRSA. And in Newton-Wellesley, the usual cocktail is vancomycin, PIP, TASO, or Zosin. Um, the use of a second gram-negative uh, antibiotic against 
pseudomonas is probably dependent on what the clinical story is with the patient, where they come from, and what their prior microbiologic data has shown. And as importantly as the initial use of antibiotics and the initial diagnosis, it's also in 2011 the use of early de-escalation or discontinuation of the antibiotics based on the overall clinical picture as well as the culture results. Interestingly enough, as we've been doing here in Newton Wellesley, we don't really have appropriate culture results because we are not doing BAL cultures, but rather we're just doing simply tracheal cultures. So what's the problem with our tracheal cultures? Uh, number one is actually it's not ever been on the VAP algorithm. So we'll be, we have been using culture data that's uh, really inaccurate. Why is it inaccurate? Because it's nonspecific. That is, there's a significant amount of colonization of the upper airway, upper airway after two to three days of uh, hospitalization, if not intubation. Without that quantitative BAL culture, it's exceedingly difficult to use our culture data obtained from tracheal cultures to try to de-escalate antibiotics. It's really based on the clinical data and very little of our de-escalation of antibiotics is based on culture data since the only culture data we have is from inadequate and inaccurate tracheal cultures. As a result of this, there ends up being an enormous amount of antibiotics being potentially overused. This results in an increased resistance pattern of, and, of course, an overuse of very expensive antibiotics. Now, if you think about it, if given the fact that we don't have culture data to really help us in making the decision, on whether or not the patient has VAP, we have a significant problem in trying to figure out when to discontinue the antibiotics or to de-escalate the antibiotics. And the reason I think that is because it's difficult to diagnose the VAP to begin with, and therefore it's very, very difficult to disprove that they have it. Also, I think many of us think that on an individual level, how wrong is it really to over-treat that patient with antibiotics as compared with the consequences <clears throat> of stopping antibiotics and therefore under-treating a patient with VAP? It's obvious to me at this point that we need to go to the next step and try to figure out if we can really obtain some meaningful culture data <clears throat> to help us with this difficult decision. So what is, what is a mini-BAL? It's essentially a non-bronchoscopic method of performing a small volume bronchoalveolar lavage, which is then obtained for gram stain, and also, as I mentioned, quantitative, which is a key point, culture. All the data that's available out there is the issue of quantitative cultures. The protection of the sample. <clears throat> this is an important issue because you want to protect it from the colonized upper airway. So what this uh, catheter has is a plug <clears throat> that gets dislodged at the moment that you're going to obtain your sample. So you pass through the upper wear airway. You then have it go, you wedge it in a, a distal airway. You pull back a slight amount. You dislodge the plug, and you perform your BAL. It utilizes quantitative cultures, the number of colonies, um, of organism to determine if the infection is quote unquote as it says real. 10 to the fourth is thought to be a true infection. Under 10 to the fourth is, saw, is thought of as colonization. As I said in uh, multiple, ti multiple times in the previous slides, what role would the mini BAL play in the treatment? Well, it would be the first time that we'll actually have some kind of quality data in terms of the microorganisms that's causing our potential VAP. It would provide us improved specificity in diagnosing whether or not the patient actually has VAP without losing sensitivity. Note, it's not perfect. 
there are false positive and false negative. So clinical judgment always rules. Secondly, what it will really do is give us the ability to de-escalate our antibiotics. So what about the issue of the blind nature of the BAL? It's clear that the blind uh, BAL will end up in the right lung in the majority of the procedures. However, it's also clear from data is that VAP, although it may appear to be on one side versus the other, is typically bilaterally, bilateral, and therefore blind versus directed does not make that much of a difference. However, the feeling would be, one would still have the feeling that if something is specific to the left side and you're very sure of that and you really want to make sure you sample the left side, that in that specific circumstances that you may want to think about doing a directed BAL. However, there's really no data supporting this last uh, point. So what are we doing here at Newton Wellesley Hospital? We're going to have a CombiCath trial. The company has given us um, approximately 15 to 30 uh, CombiCath to try. Remember, CombiCath is the trade name for the blind mini BAL. The respiratory therapists have been trained in the technique. And what they're going to do is collect simultaneous uh, tracheal samples, our traditional way of doing it, and comparing that to the blind BAL. The lab will report out both cultures. One will be specifically, say, quantitative BAL. Um, note that the patient is not being charged for both these samples, and the quantitative culture will be uh, free of charge. The true infection, as just to remind you that what we're considering true infection by the literature should be a greater than 10 to the fourth organisms in mini BAL. And you as the clinician will then have the uh, opportunity to decide what you're going to do with your antibiotics. Please note, I'll be following very, very carefully any kind of changes in um, your management based on these BALs. What I'm hoping to see in the over the next, uh, oh, during this trial, is that the mini BAL is actually changing, and I would hope improving our treatment, uh, our treatment plan uh, for potential ventilator-associated pneumonias. So here's a quick uh, list of references that you may want to look over. I think the first one is probably the most interesting one. It is somewhat confusing, though, um, in that they go through enormous amounts of data. But this was. Uh, the final, uh, the conclusion of the paper. Thanks. If you have any questions about this, feel free to uh, give me a call. I'm hoping this really works out. And I have a feeling that it will be integrated into our unit for all um, of the obtaining of uh, future endotracheal and tracheostomy specimens. Thanks a lot.